Amen. All right, tonight we are continuing our series on the subject of obeying authority. We're going to be studying the subject of children obeying their parents. Children obeying their parents. So really what we're going to be studying is the authority that the parent possesses. The authority of the father or the authority of the mother. <clears throat> And as we did in all of the uh, uh, preceding uh, 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 sessions or series of this, or episodes I guess you would say, we first looked at it which, which was the introduction of the Lord of Lords. We have to establish who is the ultimate authority before we move forward. And we have to do so for a couple of reasons. Number one, when, there are going to be times when authorities conflict. There are going to be times when one authority gives a commandment or one authority gives a law and in that commandment or that law is going to conflict with another commandment or another law. This happens on a federal and state level. It it's going to happen in all situations with authorities. So you need to know which one has supremacy. You need to have clarification of which is the superior authority. So you know who to obey and who to disobey in that situation. And the perfect example, of course, is that the Lord Jesus Christ commanded us to go into the, all the world and to preach the gospel to, to every creature, to the whole world, right? Well, there are areas where people may say, hey, you can't preach the gospel here. We see that happening in uh, you know, the book of Acts, Acts chapter number 5. And they recognize the ultimate authority. They disobey man so that they can obey God. Because why? He is the ultimate authority. He is the final authority. That's number one, the first reason why we need to know who is the ultimate authority. So we know who to obey when there is a conflict of laws or a conflict of commandments. Number one. But number two, we find out who legitimate authorities are from the ultimate authority. He is the source of all power and the source of all authority. And who he dubs or who he says to be is an authority. Well, that's who we recognize as an authority. And there are different real powers and authorities and, and governments upon this world. God recognizes government. God is not, you know, the God of the Bible does not advocate this sort of, you know, uh, uh, just, just, you know, uh, uh, you know, there is no king, there is no government type of attitude, you know. You know, uh, the, the God of the Bible believes in there being government and laws, federal, state, uh, if you will, whatever you'd like to refer to them as. He believes in there being punishments and things of that nature, of there being rulers over these governments. Not only that, he establishes, you know, the authority in the household with the, with the uh, husband. He, he establishes the authority within the church. In the Old Testament, he established authority uh, in the temple. But as we're going to be looking at tonight, there is a legitimate authority and power that is given to the parents, that is given to the father, and that is given to the mother. And we recognize this authority because the ultimate authority is the one who established it. He is the source of all power. So how do we determine what are legitimate powers and authorities in this world that we should obey well, we see if God has recognized or acknowledged these or instituted these authorities and then in that case we obey those authorities. So those are two reasons why we have to keep going back to well, who is the supreme ruler? Who is the, you know, the, 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 the potentate, the power of all? And of course it is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a very important stepping stone before you step in and start studying any sort of authorities. I want you to look with me here in Exodus chapter number 20. Of course we have the Ten Commandments here. <clears throat> listed a very famous passage. Look with me at verse number 12. The Bible says this, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter number 6. Ephesians chapter number 6. And we're going to get a little bit more detail about what the word honor means. So there we have the commandment. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Go to Ephesians, as I said. Ephesians chapter number 6. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter number 6. I believe it expands on that in Ephesians chapter number 6 verse number 1 and then I'm going to give you the definition in a modern dictionary of what the word honor means. Ephesians chapter number 6 verse number 1 says this, Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. And then it says in verse number 2, Honor thy father and mother which is the first commandment with promise. In order to honor your father and your mother, you have to obey them. Children would have to obey them. That is an aspect or that is a partial fulfillment of 
honoring your father and your mother. So what does the Bible mean when it says to honor your father and your mother? Well, number one, it means to obey them. It means to fulfill their request. If they give you an order or if they commit to you a command, then you need to fulfill that. You need to obey that. It means to do what they say. Very simply put, how, what does it mean to obey your parents? It means to do what they say. When they tell you to do something, you should do it. That is a part of honoring your father and your mother, honoring your parents. Now, the word honor uh, has a little bit of a stronger meaning than just obedience. Uh, the definition of the word honor, and yes, I know that in certain cases the word honor is referring to you know, a, a monetary uh, a type of, uh, of aspect where you know, you're paying back someone, but in this case, I don't believe that to be so, and I can show you that uh, you know, if you're interested after uh, services tonight. The word honor, just the, the basic definition of the word honor in the modern dictionary is this. High respect, great esteem. So in order to honor, it's not just to obey, but it is also to have a high respect and a great esteem. Children, in order to you know, be obedient to one of the commandments of the Ten Commandments, Right? That's pretty important. That's pretty prestigious. You know, the, God wrote these with his own finger in a rock and had Moses carry them and deliver them to the children of Israel. You know, he gave them a lot of other laws that he had written down, but these were specifically landmarks that ended up going into, you know, uh, the, the uh, 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 Ark of the Covenant. So, this is a very prestigious, very preeminent command that's brought up multiple times. And it is that children are to honor their father and to honor their mother, to honor their parents. Number one, that means to obey them. Again, when your father and mother tell you to do something, you do it. You are fulfilling that commandment when you do that, partially. Number two, it means to have great esteem or a high respect. That's more than just obeying. You can obey someone without having a high respect for that person. You can obey someone without having a great esteem for that person or whoever it may be. You could obey your boss at work and not necessarily have a high respect of him. You know, you could have any sort of authority and obey what they say, right? You could do what they want you to do, but that doesn't mean that you have a high respect. Children are, are commanded to have a high respect, to have a very high respect for their parents. Now this is a thought or a concept that is extremely foreign to the world today. You know, uh, children, number one, they're not even necessarily, uh, uh, you know, uh, even taught or, or, or trained to be obedient to parents in the first place in a lot of cases today. Uh, but not only are children supposed to be obedient, they are supposed to honor them. Now, I believe that a really good example of this, and we do this in our household, and obviously you run your own household and you decide what you think qualifies for honoring, is that my children, when they answer me, when they answer my wife, they answer with yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. I believe a lot of people here do that as well. But when, when I tell my son to do something and he responds to me, if he just says okay or yes, I correct him and I say, what did you say? And he'll respond back with, yes, sir. Most of the time, you know, they'll say the first time, yes, sir. Obviously, the younger ones, you know, uh, even, even John a lot of times now, at this point in his life, he's already responding and saying, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. I believe that that is a way to put them, because we want them to have this honor in their heart. You know, you can also, you know, go through the motions of honoring your parents on outward, but that doesn't mean that you're honoring them from your heart. This is a way to put them on the road to actually having a real sincere honor in their heart for their parents. And that's what we want for our children. We don't want them to just go through the motions. We want them to actually love the Lord to want to obey His commandments and to you know, act, uh, you know, uh, uh, truly want to do the things that God has for them. And we as well. I want you to go to uh, Colossians chapter number 3, verse number 20. We're going to see something else on this same point. So I think that that's a very good system to set up uh, if you don't already do so in your household specifically to help your children fulfill the aspect of honoring. Yes, it means to obey, but it's a stronger word than that. And to honor is to show a high respect or a high esteem. And I believe that that's a very good example of that. And that will put them in the right mindset. When they answer you with yes sir and yes ma'am, they're going to begin to look at you differently. If they, if they don't refer to you as yes sir and yes ma'am right now and you start to to, to uh, you know, mandate that to where they, they must every time they respond to you, yes sir, yes ma'am. I can guarantee you that it will affect their behavior over the next course of months. I can guarantee you that it will cause them to begin to honor you even more so. <clears throat> 
as a parent. So here in Colossians chapter number 3, Colossians chapter number 3, we're going to look at verse number 20. Colossians chapter number 3, verse number 20. Now, there's actually a lot of authorities that are mentioned here in Colossians 3. We've been here a couple of times already. I want you to look with me at verse number 20. The Bible says this, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. My next point is this, I, that we are supposed to, children are supposed to be completely obedient. I want you to notice what it says there in verse number 20. Children, obey your parents in all things. Things. Children are supposed to be obedient in every area. Now, you could, uh, you could teach two things from this. Number one, children need to completely fulfill what they are commanded to do. If a child is given a task, they don't need to you know, you know, half but do the task, right? They don't need to just partially fulfill the task. They need to completely fulfill the, the task. Either way, uh, you know, otherwise they're not being obedient in the first place. But furthermore, and I believe the primary application of this is obey in all things. That means all areas of life. Children don't have this other special area over here in their room, this little corner, this little closet where, where you're not allowed to go into. Or this other area of their life or, you know, uh, where when they go out in the backyard, you know, they're just allowed to do. Or maybe when they're around their grandparents or maybe when they're, you know, around this certain person. You know, it, there is never any particular time when a child is, is not supposed to obey their parents. They are supposed to obey in all things. All the time is what that means. Children should be in, in complete obedience to their parents. Now, what is the exception? If a parent gave a, a child a command to do something that was going to be contrary to God's law, should that child obey that? Of course not. This is the exact same concept that goes with any of man's laws. If the government tells me that I cannot read my Bible, should I obey that? No, because it's commandment of God to read my Bible. So that is the only exception. You say, you know, children are like, well, when can I obey, disobey my parents? The only time that a child could ever disobey their parent is if it would cause them to sin against God. If it would cause them to be in disobedience to God. That's the only exception. So that means that you know when you need to be obedient to your parents? All the time. Every single situation, completely, 100%. There needs to be complete obedience. Now, how long does this last? <clears throat> I believe as long as they live with you. And that's for sure what we will, you know, how we will operate in my house. My children, if, if it's my child and they are living under my roof, they are going to obey me. And I don't care if, you know, Michaela just isn't able to find that perfect man and she's still there at 42, she will obey me in all things. She will obey me in everything that I tell her to do. She's going to be living in my house and under my roof. You know, that is my household. You can see oftentimes in the Bible, in the Old Testament, it, 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 there is a head of a household. Like when the Passover took place, the man was the one that was commanded to go get the lamb, and he was responsible and accountable for everyone else. And it says, even the word, household. One for a household. And if it be too big for his house, then he needs to split it with another house. So the, that was the head of the house, and he was accountable for everyone in his house. When should children, at what ages should they be obedient? I say as long as they are living in your household. Do you know when that stops? When they leave father and mother and cleave unto, if it's a, you know, obviously a daughter, unto their husband. Or if it's a son, unto their wife. That's when I believe that that stops. You know, that's what that verse is actually explaining. You leave father and mother, and it's speaking of the man, of course, when it's quoted, and cleave unto his wife. Prior to that, you are with father and mother. You are under father and mother. That is your authority. You know, your father and your mother is who you are to be obedient to. And how much obedience? Complete obedience. Why? Look at verse 20 again. It says, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Primarily because God says so, that's why. That is the reason why. Why be obedient to your parents? Because God tells you to do it. Because it's well-pleasing to God. I'm sure all the children here want to please the Lord, right? All the kids want to please God and make God happy. What well, do you want to know a way to make God happy? Do you want to know a way that God will be pleased with you? Be obedient to your parents. Do what your parents tell you to do. Not only that, honor your parents. Highly esteem your parents. Hold your parents in, in a high regard. When you respond to your parents, tell them, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. When, mo when your mother asks you to do something, your father asks you to do something, do it. 
and do it right away. There's another thing that we picked up from another family. Oftentimes we'll say, you know, uh, if a person, if a child in our house is told to do something and they don't do it immediately, they'll get a punishment. And what we'll tell them is to delay is to disobey. There's probably other parents, I think the Martinez will say that sometimes, right? You know, if, 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 this, if it's not fulfilled right away, we'll, we will punish our children for that. Now, obviously there's exceptions, you know, you know, things going on in the household or, you know, there's an emergency or something like that. But I'll tell you why that's important. I'll tell you why it's important that they, that they do it right away. Number one, it will become a habit and they'll just begin to keep putting it off. It's, it's often times when I go in and I ask, you know, whoever it may be, Elijah, did you take the trash out? Did you do this or did you do that? I ask him why he didn't do it and what is it? It's because he has something for himself that he's doing real quick or I'm trying to get this toy, I'm trying to find this toy. It's something of a lower priority, isn't it? It's something that, you know, uh, you know, is of little meaning and has something to do for him or something along those lines, right? It shows that being obedient isn't that important to them. So what, we, what that shows when, uh, to the child when you, when you force them to, to uh, do it promptly and immediately is that this has importance. I need to do it right away. Why? Because it's important. It has significance. It takes priority over what you're doing in your room right now. Do you know what it does is it helps the children to understand being obedient to your parents is important. That's why you tell them to delay is to disobey. You need to do it immediately. Oftentimes that's what ends up happening when you delay is you end up disobeying. You end up completely forgetting about it in the first place or, they're just, or they'll just com, com, keep putting it off so that they can you know, play or do whatever they would like to do. So you know, it's real important, uh, you know, the, uh, number one, to have complete obedience. There is no area of life where a child, you know, uh, it has autonomy or independence, you know, from their parents. You know, a closet where they can go in and just do whatever they want or this particular time. That doesn't exist. The Bible tells children to obey parents in all things. And why? Because it's well-pleasing unto the Lord. That's why a child should obey their parents, because it's well-pleasing unto the Lord. I want you to go with me to Luke chapter number 2, verse number 51. Luke chapter number 2, verse number 51. <clears throat> you know, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ is our ultimate example. He is the, the greatest example for us. God came down and lived as a man, genuinely and legitimately as a man on this earth. And we can point to Him and look at the life that He lived on this earth. We can use that as an example. And isn't it interesting that there's a portion of Jesus' life as a child that's recorded as well. So uh, when a child, when we're in different phases in our lives, of course we can look at Jesus as an adult. You know, I'm 30 years old now. That was how old Jesus was right when He began His ministry. So I can of course relate to Him, right? Now, when you're a child, you're in a totally different phase in your life, aren't you? And maybe, you know, uh, when you read the story of <clears throat> Jesus when he's 30, 31, 32, it might not feel as relatable. But it's, it's you know, I, I believe that this is purposely put in here for this. For this exact reason, Jesus being recorded as while he is a child. He is there, you know, of, again, as our ultimate example. It can be the ultimate example to children as well in being obedient to his parents. We can see that as well. Look at Luke chapter number 2, verse number 51. Luke chapter number 2, we're just going to read this one verse. Luke chapter number 2, verse number 51, it says this, And he went down with them and came to Nazareth. And notice what it says next. And was subject unto them, but his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. Now that's talking about his parents. That's talking about Jesus' parents. He was about 12 years old at this time. The Bible tells you that he went down after he left the temple and he was teaching. You know, he was in there with the doctors and the lawyers. He was teaching in the temple and, you know, he was asking questions, if you're familiar with the story. The Bible tells you that afterwards he went down to Nazareth with his parents and what did he do? Jesus, as a child, just like the children in here, he would have been just a one year older than my daughter now. You know, Michaela is 11 years old. Jesus was a real 12 year old at one point in his life. And you know what he did? He obeyed his parents. He was subject unto his parents. He submitted unto his parents. So, so even children in here, they can look to Jesus as an example. Jesus, while he lived as a child, and what did he do? He set the example where he obeyed his parents. 
His mother Mary asked him to do something and he did it. Mary said, clean up your room. And he went and he cleaned up his room, if he had his own individual room. I'm not sure if he did or not. But I'm sure he had chores. She said, hey, go you know, pick up that mess over there. You know what he did? He immediately went over and did it. He was told what to do and Jesus responded and he did it. Jesus was subject unto his parents. Jesus was an obedient child. We can look to him at whatever phase of life that you are in, you can look to Jesus as your ultimate example. I want you to go with me now to Proverbs. Actually, you go to Matthew chapter number 15, verse number 4. I'm going to read to you from Proverbs chapter number 1, verse number 8. The Bible says this, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. <clears throat> Children should be seeking instruction from their parents. They should go to their parents when they have a question about something and seek instruction from them. And they should not forsake the law of their mother. When your mother gives you a command, you should do it. You should listen when your parents will give you commandments. <clears throat> we live in an extremely, extremely backslidden, just disobedient, a spirit of disobedience just permeates the United States in every area of any type of government. It doesn't matter what it is. People rebel against every form of government, whether it be God, every area. Just there's, a, there's just a spirit of disobedience today. And, and children are oftentimes, uh, you know, they're, they're provoked to be disobedient to their parents. You know, uh, you know, I don't watch television anymore, but I know that when I was getting out of watching TV, and I've even heard a lot of people preach about it. Also, at, uh, you know, when I grew up in independent Baptist churches, a lot of the uh, uh, daytime television shows, or a lot of the you know, Disney shows and stuff like that, one thing that they always think is funny, that they'll, they'll make sure that they, they institute a character of a child. You know, they'll have the, the older, like 15, 16-year-old kind of dingy girl in every single one of the Disney shows. But then they'll also have this child who's like 11, 12 years old. And, and they're all almost exactly the same. Who's this just smart aleck brat? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It's always the boy. He's always about 11, 12 years old. You can look at almost every single Disney show. And, and you'll, they'll have the, the 16, 17 year old girl who's supposed to be kind of dingy and everybody makes fun of her. And then there's like this 11, 12 year old boy who is just this disrespectful, disobedient brat. And you know what they do? They make it out like it's funny. They make it out like this kid's cool, like he's this rebel. And then they just cause you know, the, the children to try to look up to this child. What's, you know, there's people that sat down and wrote that script. And they're well aware of what that's going to promote and what type of ideas that it's going to put in. They're not ignorant of the influence that they have. So why would they do that? There are people out there that sincerely advocate the disobedience of children against their parents. There are people out there that advocate the spirit of disobedience. They're a disobedient person. They disobey authority. People that don't hold the same worldview that we have, that, that children should be in subjection. Some of the things that I'm saying to you tonight, you know, they, they sound all you know, good to you because you believe the Bible. But a lot of people would think that this is bigoted and crazy, that a child should be in subjection to their parents. Uh, but you know, so there's people out there. We need to be aware that there are people out there that, that intend on you know, uh, 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 spreading this idea that children should be able to disobey against their parents. And that's what we have today. So we need our children to understand the seriousness of disobedience. We need our children to understand the seriousness from God, from the Lord and how He views disobedience, how He views you know, dishonoring your parents. You know, There are uh, multiple different examples of this, but I want to give you just a few of them. And if People thought that was extreme. Look at what the Bible says here. We're going to look at a couple examples. Look at Matthew chapter number 15, verse number 4. Matthew chapter number 15, verse number 4. The Bible says this. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. So there we have the commandment, of honoring the father and the mother, right? A child is to honor their father and their mother. But then he also quotes from another location. I believe this is in the book of Deuteronomy. And it's talking about a child that was to curse their parents. Now it's from Exodus 21 verse 15. I have it. I'm going to read to you. It says this. Now this is actually about smiting. I'm sorry. But I'm going to read this as well. Exodus 21 15 says, And he that smiteth his father or his mother 
shall surely be put to death. So those are, those are two examples. So we have number one, Jesus saying, hey, honor your father and your mother. And then he says this on the flip side, and he that curseth, that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Now a curse is the opposite of a blessing. A blessing is to pronounce something good upon someone's life. A curse is to pronounce something bad upon someone's life. So, you know, we today, we hear children doing this, this type of, uh, of thing all the time. Constantly. I'm sure that you've heard children say things. I can tell you this, that I have heard children, when I was growing up, my friends say things like this to their parents before. And I want you to, you know, try to, you know, go back in time, if you will, into, you know, the nation of Israel. Because those same exact statements, those same exact statements that maybe you can think of a particular time when a friend, when you were over their house or something like that, I wouldn't have dared said anything like this to my parents. But where they're in an argument with their mother, they're in an argument with their father, and a perfect example of, of cursing your parents is this. If you were to say, go to hell, mom. Do you know if you were in the nation of Israel, do you know what, what would happen? And they were actually running God's law, that would have been it. It would have been done. They would have, they would have gathered you up and they would have you know, grabbed their child. The father and the mother would have taken their, 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 their child down to the rulers, to the priests. And they would have executed that child. Now that to the world today sounds insane. That sounds like crazy talk. You know, they think you know, that that is just you know, extreme and you're a radical and you're a fundamentalist. But that's because we live in a society where everyone is numb to and even so advocates just, just full-on disobedience of children. That is an extreme statement. When you're supposed to be honoring, you're supposed to be highly esteeming or, or holding your parents in high regard, responding with, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. You know, you're supposed to be being obedient in all things, turning to your parents and wishing something bad upon them. I wish that you would die and go to hell. The Bible pronounces the death penalty for such a thing because that is extremely wicked. And if you think that it's not then you need to cleanse your mind with the Word of God. That is as evil as all get out. For a child who their parents take care of them, they do everything for them, they love them, and they would look at them and say something so wicked and so evil, the child who is commanded and was made for, uh, to, it, for that exact position to be obedient unto their parents, it's extremely wicked. And the only person that would think that that is crazy is a person that is just so brainwashed and deluded. And they're so used to kids going around and cursing their parents constantly. Saying horribly wicked things to their parents. I've heard kids say terrible things to their parents. Terrible. But you know what? You don't read about kids being put to death all the time in the nation of Israel. You know that? Number one, because kids were obedient to, to their parents. Because they were taught well. When you look at why these children got to where they were in the first place, of the kids maybe that you know that spoke to their parents in such a way, it's because their parents failed at the job of parenting. It's because their parents weren't you know, uh, um, you know, uh, disciplining them while they were growing up. They were just getting more and more out of control as time went on. They were becoming more and more disobedient. They were allowing one thing and allowing the next to the point where they're, they're willing to look their parent in the face and pronounce a curse on them and to wish that something horribly bad, that their, that their own parent would die and go to hell. The one that you know, cares for them and loves for them, it's extremely wicked. So you can see how God feels about you know, this. And this is obviously an extreme example of disobedience. This is the exact opposite of you know, honoring your father and your mother. This, the, you know, he, said, he, he contrasts the two. He says, you should honor your parents. But then he says, if you curse your parents, so these are contrasted. These are the opposite. The Bible teaches that a child is to be put to death if they were to do such an act. Proverbs chapter number 30 verse number 17 says, The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. I want you to go to Exodus 21:15 and read that with me quickly. And then we're going to go to Ephesians 6 and end tonight. So as, as parents, of course, we have a responsibility to make sure that our children are obedient. 
How do we do so? Well, number one, we raise them in the law of the Lord. We teach them the Bible. We raise them in the counsel of God. Number two, we need to be correcting them when they are disobeying the Bible, when they are disobeying God's law. We need to be correcting them. How do we do so? Well, it's twofold. Number one, we need to be verbally correcting them. We need to be correcting them with our mouths and explaining to them what they did wrong and why it's wrong, why they shouldn't do it, and how to correct it and how to fix it. We want our children to do what's right, so you need to give them the resources, the information that they need in order to get it right. So if somebody, one of your kids is, is, keeps doing something bad, try to you know, uh, take the step uh, uh, verbally, as, you know, do as much that you can. You know, explain to them in words why it's wrong, why they shouldn't do that, what, what God says about it, what the consequences of that will ultimately be. And then number two, you need to be uh, giving them corporal punishment. Corporal is uh, referring to body, right? Bodily punishment. They need to be receiving whippings, right? They need to be spanked. If we love our children, we want them to be obedient. It's your job to make sure that they're, they're obedient parents. So a lot of this, I'm sure, uh, and I hope that the children got things out of it, you know, of, of the importance of obeying their parents, right? But of course, the accountability and the responsibility falls on the parent. And oftentimes, as I said, when a child gets to the point where they're willing to curse their father and mother, it's the parent's fault. Because they got that way because they weren't receiving discipline for the lesser trans, trans, uh, transgressions. So they got worse, they got worse, and they got worse until you know, they're cursing their own father, their own parents, right, father and mother. So there needs to be corporal punishment. If a child transgresses, they need to be explained what they did wrong in detail. Explain to them why it's bad, what will end up happening. And number two, they need to receive corporal punishment. You know, they need to receive a spanking or a whipping. You know, just the other day when we were at, uh, you know, I can give you an example real quick of something. I believe this is, this is uh, you know, uh, why both of those two things are necessary. Because when you give the verbal correction, it's also important to explain to your children, I do this every time, that you are, that you are disciplining them because you love them. Every single time before I spank my child, I explain to them why I'm disciplining them. I tell them that I love them and I give them a kiss before I spank them. I spank them and I give them a kiss afterwards. The other day we were at uh, uh, my in-law's house and uh, I walked into the room and the kids are all playing in the room and Carter's already laughing. He knows what story I'm telling. Carter and Peyton were watching uh, Jonathan. He was sitting down on this little small kid's couch. And he, I watched him, there was this little, uh, uh, like a Dora stuffed doll. And, uh, you know, good thing it wasn't a real person because he reaches out with his hand like fully extended and grabs it by the neck and like brings it over to him. He's holding it like this and he's like talking to it like it did something bad. Am I right so far, Carter? He's like she's saying his finger, wagging his finger around like he's correcting it like verbally. And he's saying something to it, you know, and he's, he's wagging his finger around and then he takes it and he gives it a kiss. And then he bends it over his knee and it, he gives it a hard spank. And I mean, he's, he's pounding this thing, right? Hopefully CPS didn't see that. And then he stood it up and he gave it another kiss and then he set it back down. Is that right, Carter? Do you know where he got that from? He was just reenacting exactly what I do to him each time. You know, when I'm getting ready to spank him, what I'll do is I'll tell him to come here. I'll give him a verbal correction. You know, I, don't, I guess apparently I wag my finger around. I'll give him a correction. I'll explain to him why that's wrong, what he was doing. And you don't do that because this, this, and this. You know, you shouldn't, you know, God tells you not to do it. You know, and, <clears throat> you know, uh, you, need to, you, know you, you need to be obedient to God, but also mommy and daddy tell you not to do it. And God tells you to be obedient to mommy and daddy. I'll explain all that to him as much as he can understand. And, of course, you, you, know, you can elaborate more so with the older children, the more uh, intelligent they are. And then I'll get, and I, I always give them a kiss beforehand. I give them the spanking, and I give them a kiss afterwards. And I always tell them that I love them every time. Because, you know, the reason why I'm spanking them is because I love them. That's the whole purpose. That's the whole reason. That's the reason why I'm giving them the whipping in the first place. And I want them to understand, hey, I'm spanking you right now, not out of anger, not because I'm mad, not because I hate you, but because I love you and I want you to do what's right. The, you know, this is what we walk away from that. That makes a, you know, John is, uh, you know, what is he, two and a half roughly, Jessica? You know, he's a young kid. He's very, very young. He's, you know, his, his, uh, his, you know his, his skills are growing and everything, but he's very immature mentally and physically in a lot of areas, right? He's only two and a half. 
But you can see what an impression that that makes upon him. He didn't only grab that thing and spank it. He grabbed it, he gave it a kiss, spanked it, and then he gave it another kiss afterwards. And he also knew you better give the verbal correction, right? So he knew, he understood the order of everything, right, when it happened. Children need verbal correction. You know, just like Jesus, when he was, when he was rebuking one of the churches in Revelation, he said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. You need both. You children need to be rebuked, they need to be corrected because they need to know why it's wrong. But then also, they need that spanking because that is what drives the foolishness out of them. You know, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. And, 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 and you know, corporal punishment is necessary. It is necessary. People, I don't care. You know, these you know, stinking liberals can say that it's child abuse all that they want. They are the ones that are abusing their children. They're the ones that hate their children. Their children end up turning out like a bunch of stinking monsters and it's because they didn't exercise and practice corporal punishment. I love my children. You know, you're either going to have, you're either going to have to put up with the, with the, uh, the sting and the problems now or later. I choose to do it now on the rear end as opposed to my child destroying his life later. What they do is they, they don't want to go through the little bit of temporal uh, uh, heartache now when spanking the child but then they go through the much worse heartache later when their child is, is you know, some drunken fool who's out committing adultery and just lives a completely dysfunctional life. A horribly dysfunctional life. If we want our children to be obedient to us, we need to practice the, uh, uh, um, the uh, you know, rebuking and the chastening. We need to take the steps that the Bible commands to us as parents. We need to practice corporal punishment. We also need to verbally correct our children. Here in Exodus chapter number 21, verse number 15, I wanted you to see this for, for yourself. And I wanted children to understand the extremity and how serious extreme, dis, the, the extreme dishonoring of the, the parents is. Look at Exodus chapter number 21, verse number 15. The Bible says this. And he that smiteth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Has anybody here ever seen a, a, a child hit? And obviously, it's, you know, not talking about a one-year-old or a two-year-old that doesn't understand. But has anyone ever seen, maybe at a house, or maybe a, a, a son or a child or something, maybe get into a fight with their father and punch their father? I've seen it happen before. So it, it occurs. It takes place. Children, and I'm talking about an older child, like a 16-year-old boy. The Bible teaches that if God had his way... That boy would be taken and put to death. That is an extreme trans transgression. That is extreme. It is, it is so far from what the natural order of things, it's just, it's crazy. God, when creating the family unit, gave authority. He is, he is the head of all power, all might, all authority. And he handed the authority to the parents. And the children are to be obedient to their parents, and furthermore, to honor their parents. That child should be saying, yes, sir, and yes, ma'am, as opposed to punching or smiting their own father in the face. The Bible teaches that that is, that is so wicked and so, such, a, such a horrible sin that it's worthy of death if a child were to smite their own parents. Amen. Children need to, these types of things, you know, you know, somebody might say, gosh, you're going to scare all those kids. I hope that it does. That's exactly what I hope that it does. You know what the purpose for all of the capital punishment and the death penalty was? To be a public example to everyone else. Do you know if those children could walk out and see some 17-year-old boy who just got into a fist fight with his dad, executed and put to death, punching his own father in the face? Do you know if children went out and saw that? Do you know what their response would be? Do you think they'd turn around and hit their dad? Are you kidding me? They'd be a lot more obedient to their parents. They'd be a lot more likely to obey and to honor their father if they just witnessed some kid taken down here and was given the, you know, the capital punishment. What do you think the purpose for all of the, all the capital punishment is? It's a deterrent. It is meant to deter them from committing such a wicked, evil act. And people are so desensitized because children are just so stinking disobedient to their parents today. They're just, they have no honor for their parents. They have no honor for their father. They have no honor for their mothers today. So if I were to say something like that, people just think it's crazy. No, it's righteous. 
The law of the Lord is perfect. That is perfect judgment. That is just judgment. That in, in, if we were able to determine perfect truth in this reality, it's right here. Amen. This is what it is. You know what a child deserves if he smites his parents? To be put to death. That's what a child deserves. So that right there should, should balance out and help us to understand how truly important it is for a child to honor their father and their mother and how wicked it is for a child to even you know, disobey their parents. Not only to do something so wicked like that, you don't even need to get close to that. You should stay as far away from that as you can. You should be way over on the other side, honoring your father and your mother. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Not delaying when you're given commandments. Wanting to please your parents. You know, people all the time are just, they're, they're, they're totally on the opposite side. They're trying to just do the minimum. They do this with church too. People just try to do the minimum. You know, I'm not necessarily commanded to come to church, you know, three times a week, so I'll just come once. Everybody just wants to do the minimum amount with everything. Children, you know, oftentimes will do the same thing. They just want to do just what they're commanded. Why not just, just try to make your parents happy? Why not just in your Christian life, just try to make God happy? Instead of just doing exactly what he told you to do, why not do a little bit more and actually try to please him? Please the Lord and please God. You know, it's a Christian characteristic to go above and beyond. If you remember the, the parable about the servant, you know, it talks about the servant going out and, and uh, he's working and he comes in and, and he says, you know, he basically asks him the question, you know, the, the servant comes in and then the servant serves the man. You know, is he going to thank him for, for, you know, the work that he had done? And he says, you know, I want not. You know, why? Because that's what's expected of him. Because that's the job of the servant. Basically this, here's simply put. Does the servant get, get thanked for serving? Does he receive, you know, accolades and credit for doing his job? No. Do you know when you would receive credit and accolades oftentimes? When you do a little bit more. When you go above and beyond. Go the extra mile. That's a Christian characteristic. If somebody asks you to run a mile with them, you run two. You run twain. Right? Children shouldn't be just trying to do the minimum. It should be the same way. You know, uh, the Lord gave you a commandment. The Father gave you a commandment in heaven to obey your parents. So just like servants obey their masters as if they were serving the Lord, it makes perfect sense that you as children should obey your parents as unto the Lord because He's the one that commanded you in the first place. Go above and beyond. Please your parents, but also understand that you are pleasing the Lord when you are being obedient to Him. Did I have you turn to Ephesians 6? Go to Ephesians chapter 6 and we're going to end there. Ephesians chapter number 6. I'm going to give all of the children an incentive to obey their parents. <clears throat> You know, there's another proverb, I didn't look it up and didn't, didn't put it down, but you know, it talks about how you know, a, a child that, that dishonors his father or his mother, how his lamp will be put out in obscure darkness or something like that. And it's also, of course, referencing you know, the death penalty again. Uh, the importance of, of honoring uh, you know, your, your parents is very high. <clears throat> it would be the, the value of your life in that case. Look at it again in Ephesians chapter number 6. I want you to look at verse number 1, 2, and we're going to look at verse 3 this time. It says this again. Children, obey your parents, <coughs> excuse me, in the Lord. So notice that. In the Lord. For this is right. That's a good memory verse for all the children in here. If any of them don't have that memorized. Very simple. It's, you know, small syllables. Very easy to, to, uh, uh, to memorize. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Look at how simple this concept is. For this is right. Verse 2. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise. So there's a promise given with this commandment. It's the very first commandment that has a promise attached to it that if you fulfill this, I promise God is saying, I will do this. So let's see what it is. What did God covenant or promise? Verse 3. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. So this is repeated. We saw it in Exodus 20. It's repeated in Deuteronomy chapter 5. We see it here again in, in Ephesians chapter number 6. So, number one, children should obey their parents because it's right. They should obey their parents because God says to do so. That, these are two good reasons to obey your parents. But let me give you another reason, children... I'm going to end right now. Listen to this. Let me give you another reason, children, why you should obey your parents. Who wants to live a long life on this earth? Kids. Who wants to live a long life? Who wants to, who wants to die tomorrow? Anybody? 
Nobody, right? Everyone wants to live a long life, right? Do you know what God promises you? And God is, you know, you know the Bible's real clear, God cannot lie. If God promises you something, it will come to pass. It will come true. God promises that if you are obedient to your parents, if you obey your parents, that means you do what they tell you to do, that you will live a long life upon the earth. That's a promise from God. Who believes God's promises? Children. Brother Hall, you can raise your hand too. Yeah. Right? We believe God's promises, right? In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. God cannot lie. You know what God promised you children? It's a promise given to all of you kids. That if you obey your parents, if you are obedient to your parents, He promises you that you will live a long life on this earth. Number one, you should do it because it's right. Number two, you should do it because you want to please God. You want to, you know, we, don't, we want to make our parents happy, but even more so, we want God to be happy with us, the creator of the earth. And number three, He gives you an incentive. And what is it? That God promises that He'll give you a long life upon this earth. There are legitimate authorities that exist. There are many different authorities that exist. And one of those authorities is the power that was given from God to a father and to a mother over top of the children. They are the head of the children. They are the head of the household. And children are to obey their parents. They are to do what they tell them to do. And furthermore, they are to honor them. They, I believe that they should refer to them as yes sir, yes ma'am. They should hold their parents in a high regard and a high esteem. Yeah. So children, obey your parents. Obey your parents. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you, dear Lord, for your word. We thank you, dear God, for everything you've done for us. Uh, we thank you for being the, the ultimate Father, the everlasting Father. Uh, we ask you that you would bless our church, dear God. Be with us in every area. Uh, um, uh, be with uh, Brother Russell Bops and, and his family while they're traveling back, dear Lord, and all the other families and, and, uh, that we know of that are maybe traveling around and keep them safe, dear Lord. And uh, we ask you that you would bless the, the end of the night and help, uh, help us all to get good rest and, and to, uh, to uh, uh, have good health. And we love you, as I said, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.